What's up, Freckle family? Welcome back. It's Monday, November 7th, and I'm your daily trivia host, Ian Finer, aka Lord Trivia himself. Freckle Daily Trivia consists of five everyday questions with weekly rotating topics. Each day you play earns you a raffle ticket towards amazing weekly prize draws like NFT airdrops, toys, collectibles, merch, apparel, and more. This week is an incredible week brought to you by the Brawler Bears and the Plague NFT. It's the Bears versus the Frogs, and to celebrate this epic week of trivia, we'll be asking you questions about the Bears and Frogs of the world in science, history, pop culture, movies, TV, and more. Now, today, let's talk about our contender in the blue corner. The Brawler Bears are one of the first on-chain composable dynamic NFT collections made up of 4,169 animated pixelated brawlin bears. With layer one to layer two registry lock staking, you can earn credits for staking your bears, train them to improve the stats and earn XP that updates the metadata dynamically. Spend and earn credits to send your bears on a quest to earn equipable weapons and items, armor, other gear that can be minted as NFTs. Now, check out this video from the Brawler Bears. There are some incredible prizes this week, Freckle family, including five Brawler Bears NFTs, two Plague NFTs, Brawler Bear shirts, nine total NFT laser engravings, thank you, Charlie, and variety packs from Haritos, Iron Studios collectibles, Manscaped V4 lawnmowers, and more. Now, let the battle begin with question one. Koala bears eat leaves from this tree. Is it A, Joshua trees, B, Wolemi trees, C, eucalyptus trees, or D, silk cotton trees? Well, koala bears are known for solely eating the poisonous leaves from C, the eucalyptus tree. Eucalyptus leaves are poisonous to most animals and humans, but koalas are able to safely process the leaves and their toxic chemicals by using these microbes that inhabit the animal's digestive tract. Not only can these living microbes break down the poisonous compounds, but they're passed on from mother to baby koala. Eucalyptus leaves can be found in many beauty and health and wellness products for humans. Just don't eat them. Now on to question two, this question is sponsored by our friends at Haritos. Haritos comes in a variety of unique flavors and we'll be giving away variety packs as Haritos is the official sponsor of Freckle Trivia. Cheers. Tell your mouth to try us, cause we taste super good. Super good, super good, super good. Super good, super good, super good. Super good, super good, super good. Cause we just taste super good. Haritos! Thank you, Haritos. Now on to the question. The legendary Jim Henson was the puppeteer for Kermit the Frog. And what other famous character? Is it A, Elmo, B, Yoda, C, E.T., or D, Chucky? Well, the incredible Jim Henson, creator of the Muppets and a whole lot more, is also a talented puppeteer known for his work behind Kermit the Frog and many other Muppet characters. But he also did much of the puppet work for Sesame Street characters, including the iconic A, Elmo. Henson produced the classic children's show on PBS. As the show's theme song goes, Henson swept the clouds away for a brighter and sunny day with various original characters, including Big Bird, Ernie, Bert, Oscar the Grouch, Grover, Snuffleupagus, and of course, Elmo. Between his puppetry and animated shorts, Henson perfected his gift for engaging children and making learning fun on Sesame Street. Now on to question number three, who was the head coach of the 1985 Super Bowl winning Chicago Bears? Is it A, John Driscoll, B, Mike Ditka, C, Dick Jaro, or D, Don Shula? Well, the nearly undefeated 1985 Chicago Bears were one of the most dominating football teams in NFL history. 
not only on the field, but off the field. They had a tremendous impact that captured the imagination of the average Joe on the streets of Chicago. This was all at the helm of their might, of their head coach, B, the legendary Mike Ditka. The 85 Bears plowed through the regular season with a 15 and one record, outscoring their opponents 456 to 198, and put forth the most ruthless defense that only allowed for five of their opponents to score more than 10 points in a game. Definitely gives a different meaning to the term bearish, am I right? Now, on to question four, the battle continues. What company? was the publisher for Frogger when it was first released. Is it A, Konami, B, Sega, C, Nintendo, or D, Rare? Well, this may be a bit of a trick question because on July 22nd, 1981, Sega gained the exclusive rights to manufacture and distribute the game worldwide. But Frogger was originally developed by A, Konami, and it was first published in Japan on January 12th, 1981. It entered mass production in June 1981, becoming a massive success in Japan over the next few months. Frogger's appeal was seen to lack barriers of age or gender. Its success increased the production, becoming one of the top grossing arcade games in North America during 1981. The arcade game earned over $135 million, which is nearly half a billion when adjusted for today's inflation. Now, on to the final question of the day, what is the name of the version of the frog version of Thor? Is it A, Mandrill, B, Dupe, C, Mandrill, or D, Puddlegup? Well, Simon Walterson was a professional football player until a severe knee injury ended his playing career. He found joy with his wife and the work she did for charity, but unfortunately, that all changed when she died during childbirth, causing him to fall into a severe depression. As the story goes, Walterson encountered a witch who was able to help him talk to his late wife. But as we know, the witchy exchange, he wasn't able to pay the witch, so she cursed him, consequently transforming him into a frog named D, Puddlegup. Later in the comics, Puddlegup had a run-in with Thor Odinson, who himself had been turned into a frog by Loki. As a frog, Thor learned about the rat versus frog war and decided to aid the frogs in their battle. As Puddlegup is left alone to defend himself against the rats, he discovers a sliver of Thor's hammer Mjolnir. And when he picked it up, he acquired the power of Thor. Now, that concludes today's round of Bears vs. Frogs trivia. I've been your host, Ian Finer, and thank you so much for playing. And thank you to our sponsors for the week, the Brawler Bears and the Plague. Make sure you jump in our Discord server, discord.gg slash freckle, to be included in our weekly prize raffles. We'll see you again tomorrow for another round of Bears vs. Frogs trivia, and thanks for playing. What's up, Freckle family? Welcome back. It's Tuesday, November 8th, and I'm your daily trivia host, Ian Finer, a.k.a. Lord Trivia himself. Freckle Daily Trivia consists of five everyday questions with weekly rotating topics. Each day you play earns you a raffle ticket towards amazing weekly prizes like NFT airdrops, toys, collectibles, merch, apparel, and more. This week is an incredible week brought to you by the Brawler Bears and the Plague NFT. It's the Bears versus the Frogs, and to celebrate this epic trivia battle, we'll be asking you questions about all the bears and frogs of the world in science, history, pop culture, movies, TV, and more. Today, let's talk about our contender in the red corner. The Plague NFT is a project aimed at decentralizing opportunity through various Web3 businesses and protocols for their holders. Their goal is to build a dominant Web3 brand in and outside the NFT scene. They continue to develop demand pulls for native tokens, frog through new businesses, acquisitions of existing businesses, and strategic partnerships. Ultimately, they have set out to prove that they can change the way of traditional business and how it's done using Web3 technology, principles, and the Plague community. Check out this crazy video from the Plague NFT. It's not about me. It's about us. to work as a team. It's the only way to be the best. The only way is to
stay confident. The only way to win. Some incredible prizes this week, Freckle family, including five Brawler Bears NFTs, two Plague NFTs, Brawler Bear shirts, and nine total NFT laser engravings. Thank you, Charlie. Also, Haritos variety packs, because Haritos is the official beverage sponsor of Freckle Trivia, Iron Studios collectibles, no more rugs with Manscaped V4 lawnmowers, and more. Now, let's get today started with a question about a bear smarter than your average bear. Why did Yogi Bear and Boo Boo have a collar? Is it A, for comedic purposes? B, to make him more human-like? C, it's cheaper to animate? Or D, he stole it from a family? Well, that collar allowed Hanna-Barbera to produce the cartoons of Yogi and Boo Boo by animating their heads separate from their body. Thus, this saved tens of thousands of drawings for each show that they did, saving the studio tons of time and tons of money. Making our answer, C, it was cheaper to animate. Now, of course, that dopey collar and tie are such an integral part of character design that I can't imagine Yogi Bear without them. Hey, Boo Boo. Now on to question number two. In Goldilocks and the Three Bears, whose porridge was too cold? Is it A, Baby Bear, B, Mama Bear, C, Papa Bear, or D, Grandpa Bear? Well, the old fairy tale sees Goldilocks breaking into the bear's den, trying three different bowls of porridge. Papa Bear's big bowl of porridge was way too hot to eat, and Baby Bear's ended up being just right. But our answer, B, Mama Bear's porridge, was just too darn cold. The original tale that was published in 1837 actually has two variations. In one version, the bears return home and tear her apart and eat her. Hardly an ending for a bedtime story. The other version really is no better. It sees Goldilocks as an old vagrant woman. The rest of the tale is fairly similar, but when she jumps out the window to escape, she either breaks her neck from the fall or she gets arrested and goes to jail for vagrancy. Moral of the story, don't break into a bear's den. Now let's move on from that horrific story to question three. What did frogs symbolize in ancient Egypt? Is it A, divinity and protection? B, life and immortality? C, transformation? Or D, fertility? Well, frogs had great significance and power in ancient Egypt, and this was linked to D, fertility. From chaos to serenity, a world to disorder to a world of unity, the mighty frog has seen it all. In ancient Egypt, many gods and goddesses have been connected with the frog, such as Heket, Ptah, Hotet, Kek, Nun, and Amun. The trend of wearing frog amulets had become so popular that our answer D of fertility and were often buried alongside the dead to help them protect and revive them. In fact, it was a common practice for frogs to be mummified with the dead. Kind of gross, but these amulets were seen as magical and divine and were there to ensure a healthy rebirth. Now on to question number four. This question is sponsored by NFT laser engravers. NFT laser engravers are giving away nine engravings. Thank you, Charlie. I love my NFT laser engraver of my creepy club. Check it out. Check them out at nftlaserengravers.com. Now on to question four, where do the Care Bears live? Is it A, Care Town, B, Carolot, C, Snuggleville, or D, Careville? Well, the Care Bears actually lived in a place called the Kingdom of Caring. Within this kingdom is their hometown, B, Carolot, where the Care Bears themselves lived in the Forest of Feelings. The stories they took part in focused on caring and helping, showing us as young children how to be aware of the feelings of others. The Care Bears had the Care Bears stare. 
is actually a lot happier than that, where they all stand together and project light from their individual symbols. This combined ray of joy would bring love and happiness to even the hardest and most steely of hearts. Now on to the final question of today's battle, where do poison dart frogs seen here get their names from? Is it A, if you eat them, you get a great sense of direction? B, their poison was used as the tips of blow darts? C, it's their head's shape? Or D, their heads are tipped with the poison? Well, these colorful frogs are often called dart frogs due to the Native Americans' use of B, their toxic secretions, to poison the tips of their blow darts and arrows. These frogs are extremely brightly colored and their great toxicity derives from their diet of ants, mites, and termites. Now they never use these toxins to attack or hunt for hunting. They are only used in self-defense. When a predator consumes them, they either die or become extremely ill. Over time, most animals have learned not to consume them. Now that concludes today's round of Bears versus Frogs trivia. I've been your host, Ian Finer, and thank you so much for playing, and big thank you to our sponsors for the week, the Brawler Bears and the Plague NFT. Make sure you jump on our Discord server, discord.gg slash freckle, to be included in our weekly prize raffles. Now, we'll see you again tomorrow for another round of this epic battle. Thanks for playing. What's up, Freckle family? Welcome back. It's Wednesday, November 9th, and I'm your daily trivia host, Ian Finer, AKA Lord Trivia himself. Freckle Daily Trivia consists of five everyday questions with weekly rotating topics. Each day you play earns you a raffle ticket towards amazing weekly prize draws like NFT airdrops, toys, collectibles, merch, apparel, and more. This week is an incredible week brought to you by the Brawler Bears and the Plague NFT. It's the Bears versus the Frogs, y'all. To celebrate this epic battle, we'll be asking you questions about the bears and frogs of the world in science, history, pop culture, movies, TV, and more. Today, let's talk about our contender in the blue corner. The Brawler Bears is one of the first on-chain composable dynamic NFT collections made up of 4,169 animated, pixelated, brawlin' bears. With L1 to L2 registry lock staking, you can earn credits for staking your bears, train them to improve their stats, and earn XP that updates the metadata dynamically. Spend your earned credits to send your bears on crest quests to earn equipable items like weapons, armor, and other gear that can be minted as NFTs. Check out this video from the Brawler Bears. Now there's some incredible prizes this week, my Freckle family, including five Brawler Bears NFTs, two Plague NFTs, Brawler Bear shirts, and a total of nine NFT laser engravings. Thank you, Charlie. Of course, Haritos Variety Packs, Iron Studios Collectibles, Manscaped V4 Lawnmowers, and more. Now, on to question one. In The Princess and the Frog, why doesn't Tiana's kiss turn Frog Naveen back into a human? Is it A, because her heart wasn't in it? B, she doesn't say a magic word? C, she's not an actual princess? Or D, a spell was cast on her? Well, Tiana is a hardworking waitress, desperate to fulfill her dreams as a restaurant owner. She is set on a journey to turn the Frog Prince back into a human being but she ends up facing the same problem because after she kisses him, she too is transformed into a frog. And this is due to C, she actually just wasn't a princess. Now, onto the next question. This question is sponsored by our friends at Haritos. Haritos has given us a number of variety and loteria packs to give away through the end of the year. We're proud to call Haritos the official beverage of Freckle Trivia. Salute. Tell your mouth to try us. Cause we taste super good. Super good, super good, super good. Oh. Super good, super good, super good. Oh. Super good, super good, super good. Oh. Cause we just taste super good. Arritos! Now on to the question. 
What was the name of the curse that stated the Chicago Cubs would never win another World Series? Is it A, the curse of Rocky Colavito, B, the curse of the Colonel, C, the curse of the Bambino, or D, the curse of the Billy Goat? Well, our answer, D, the curse of the Billy Goat, was placed over the Chicago Cubs, stating that they would never win another World Series again. It all started when Cianis, the owner of the Billy Goat Tavern in Chicago, decided to buy tickets and bring his goat to Game 4 of the 1945 World Series against the Detroit Tigers. Eventually, Cianis and his goat were removed from Wrigley Field, and on his way out, old Billy declared, them Cubs ain't ever gonna win no more. Insulted at the treatment of his goat, he sent a telegram to the owner, Philip K. Wrigley, and said, the Cubs are gonna lose this World Series Series, and they are never going to win another series again. It would in fact take the Cubs over 70 years to reach another World Series, and in 2016, they finally broke the curse. Now on to question number three, what is the name of the frog seen in this clip? Hello my baby, hello my honey, hello my ragtime gal, send me a kiss by wire. Baby, my heart's on fire. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me. Then you'll be left alone. Oh, baby, telephone and tell me I'm your own. Is it A, my baby frog, B, Michigan J frog, C, froggy, or D, Mr. Toad? While not many characters achieve long-lasting fame having just appeared in a single six-minute cartoon, but our answer, in fact, B, Michigan J Frog, may be the only one. When One Froggy Evening uh, premiered on December 31st, 1955, his spectacular song, Hello My Baby, Hello My Darling, and his dance routines were seen by only one person. No one expected him to become as famous as he did. In fact, his name was only given to him in retrospect. The cartoon itself, he was nameless, but unofficially called Enrico by animators. But after appearing in a Looney Tunes special, the frog rose to fame and became the WB mascot for 10 years. Now on to question number four, what type of frog is on the Rainforest Cafe logo? Is it A, the poison arrow frog, B, the red-eyed tree frog, C, the green frog, or D, the golden mantella? Well, the Rainforest Cafe is meant to feel like you're eating in a real-life rainforest, and when you're in the rainforest, you, of course, are going to see red-eyed tree frogs. So that's why our answer is B. Cha-Cha, the red-eyed tree frog, is the mascot of the Rainforest Cafe. It can be hard to hear the daily specials over the storm, a loud and distracting production that happens every 17 minutes or so in a Rainforest Cafe. Lights flicker on and off to mimic lighting, an animatronic gorilla beats its chest, and the sounds of elephants trumpeting overpower whatever your safari guide, that's the waiter and waitress, might be trying to tell you. While the exact rainstorm can differ from restaurant to restaurant, there are currently 27 rainforest cafes worldwide, and the experience is designed to remain the same. Casual mall dining in the middle of a rainforest. Now, next question. Who is the voice for Baloo in the Jungle Book and also Little John from Robin Hood? Is it A, Phil Harris, B, Brian Bedford, C, Terry Thomas, or D, Roger Miller? Well, Robin Hood and Little John are walking through the forest. The bear in Disney's Robin Hood is nearly identical to Baloo in the Jungle Book. Both characters were in fact voiced by a, Phil Harris, and have similar personalities. The slight difference is that Little John more closely resembles a, resembles a brown or grizzly bear, while Baloo is based on the Indian sloth bear. Little John is also slightly more responsible, albeit villainous, than Baloo. And that concludes today's round of Bears vs. Frogs Trivia. I've been your host, Ian Finer, and thank you so much for playing, and thank you to our sponsors for the week, the Brawler Bear, Bears, and the Plague NFT. Make sure you jump on our Discord server, discord.gg slash freckle, to be included in our weekly prize raffles. We'll see you again tomorrow for another round of an epic battle, Bears vs. Frogs Trivia, and thanks for playing. 
What's up, Freckle family? Welcome back. It's Thursday, November 10th, and I'm your daily trivia host, Ian Finer, AKA Lord Trivia himself. Freckle Daily Trivia consists of five everyday questions with weekly rotating topics. Each day you play earns you a raffle ticket towards amazing weekly prize draws like NFT airdrops, toys, collectibles, merch, apparel, and more. This week is an incredible week brought to you by the Bears and the Plague NFT. It's the Bears versus the Frogs, and to celebrate this epic trivia battle, we'll be asking you all things about bears and frogs of the world in science, history, pop culture, movies, and more. Today, let's talk about our contender in the red corner. The Plague NFT is a project aimed at decentralizing opportunity through various Web3 businesses and protocols for their holders. Their goal is to build a dominant Web3 brand in and outside the NFT scene. They continue to develop demand for their native token, Frog, through businesses, acquisitions of existing businesses, and strategic partnerships. Ultimately, they have set out to prove that they can change the way traditional business is done using Web3 technology, principles, and the Plague community. Check out this crazy video from the Plague NFT. It's not about me. It's about us. We have to work as a team. It's the only way to be the best. The only way to stay confident. The only way to win. Some incredible prizes this week include five Brawler Bears NFTs, two Plague NFTs, Brawler Bear shirts, and nine total NFT laser engravings. Four in 11 by 11 and five in five by five. Of course, Haritos variety packs because Haritos is the official beverage of Freckle Trivia, Iron Studios collectibles, Manscaped V4 lawnmowers, and more. Now, on to the first question of the day. Paddington Bear is known for wearing what? Is it A, Wellington boots, B, snowshoes, C, overalls, or D, a bow tie? Well, Paddington's iconic A, Wellington boots are what he is best known for wearing. Paddington's famous wellies weren't that famous until the plush version came out in 1972. The owner of a small business called Gabrielle Designs decided to make a Paddington stuffed animal for her children because there wasn't yet one on the market. Although the bear had received a pair of Wellington boots in 1964, Paddington marches on, he wasn't necessarily known for them just yet. The wellies were placed on the stuffed bear's feet in order to help him stand upright, and he became known for his colorful boots when the toy became a commercial success. I grew up with Paddington, I absolutely love it. Now, on to question number two. This famous song by Three Dog Night starts off with blank was a bullfrog. Is it A, Austin, B, Jeremiah, C, Jacob, or D, Justin? Well, Joy to the World by Three Dog Night is popularly known for its opening lyric. B, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Over the years, there have been much speculation surrounding the meaning of this song. Some deep thinkers have theorized that there is a biblical meaning and that the bullfrog is representative of the prophet Jeremiah in the Bible, or that the bullfrog is symbolic of the voice of God, speaking out to unite the world. That, however, just isn't the case. Lead singer Axton said that while attempting to think of lyrics, he took a sip of wine, he leaned on his speaker, and the first line that came to his head was Jeremiah was a bullfrog. So he put it on paper. In a turn of fate, the song is forever cemented in rock and roll history. Now on to the next question. This question is sponsored by my friend at NFT Laser Engravers. Check out this video from my friend Charlie.
Thanks, Charlie, and really generous of you to give away nine NFT engravers for this week of trivia. I love you, brother. Now, on to the question, where does Winnie the Pooh live? Is it A, the Sherwood Forest, B, the Grassy Meadows, C, the Magic Forest, or D, the Hundred Acre Woods? Well, the honey-loving Winnie the Pooh and friends live in D, the Hundred Acre Wood. With most of the characters being inspired by real life people, it's no surprise that the setting of Milne's story has real life origins as well. Milne was inspired by the Ashdown Forest, a wooded area near his home, about 40 miles west of London. Inside the forest lies the 500 acre wood, which sprouted the idea for Pooh's own 100 acre wood. Also grew up with Winnie the Pooh, love it. Now on to question four, who wrote The Frog Prince? Is it A, the Brothers Grimm, D, Edgar Allan Poe, C, Herman Melville, or D, Mark Twain? Well, The Frog Prince is a well-known fairy tale from the collection of A, the Brothers Grimm. In fact, it was the very first fairy tale in the first version of their book, which is now considered one of the cornerstones of Western civilization. The main theme of the story is the importance of a given word. The princess had lost a golden ball. She promised the frog whatever he wanted if he could help her. But when she got the ball, she didn't care about her promises anymore. She actually believed her promise to a frog doesn't really count as an obligation. But when the princess kissed the frog, the frog turned into a charming prince. Now for the final question of the day, before Smokey the Bear became the face of fire prevention, who was the face of the movement? Is it A, Bambi, B, Dumbo, C, Yogi Bear, or D, Fred Flintstone? The U.S. began its national wildfire prevention campaign during World War II. An early poster for the campaign featured Walt Disney's A, Bambi, along with his pals, her pals, Thumper and Flower. Smokey made his first appearance in a 1944 poster where he could be seen dousing a campfire with a bucket of water. His famous slogan, only you could prevent forest fires, debuted a few years later. And that concludes today's round of Bears and Frogs Trivia. I've been your host, Ian Finer, and thank you so much for playing, and thank you to our prize sponsors for the week, Brawler Bears and the Plague NFT. Make sure you jump on our Discord server, discord.gg slash freckle, to be included in our weekly prize raffles. We'll see you again tomorrow for the final day of this epic showdown, and thanks for playing. What's up, Freckle family? Welcome back. It's Friday, TGIF, November 11th, and I'm your daily trivia host, Ian Finer, a.k.a. Board Trivia himself. Freckle Daily Trivia consists of five everyday questions with weekly rotating topics. Each day you play earns you a raffle ticket towards amazing weekly prizes like NFT airdrops, toys, collectibles, merch, apparel, and more. This week has been an incredible week brought to you by the Brawler Bears and the Plague NFT. It's been the Bears versus the Frogs battle and to celebrate this epic war, we've been asking you questions about bears, frogs of the world in science, history, pop culture, movies, TV, and more. Big thank you to our partner communities this week. It's been a tremendous battle. Now check out these videos from the Brawler Bears and the Plague NFT. It's not about me. It's about us. We have to work as a team. It's the only way to be the best. The only way to stay confident. The only way to win. There are
are some incredible prizes this week, Freckle family. Good luck to you all. We have five Brawler Bear NFTs, two Plague NFTs, Brawler Bear shirts, and nine, count them, nine total NFT laser engravings from our friend Charlie at NFT Laser Engravers. Make sure you check them out. Haritos Variety Soda Packs, Iron Studios Collectibles, Manscaped V4 Lawnmowers, and more. Now, let's start the beginning and the end with question one. What martial arts maneuver does Poe from Kung Fu Panda perform when he says skidoosh? Is it A, the traditional finger hold, B, the Chinese finger trapper, C, the Wu Chi finger hold, or D, a sleeper hold? Well, when Poe, voiced by Jack Black, sits on Tai Lung's head, he says, time to feel the thunder. But when he says skidoosh, he does C, the Wu Chi finger hold. He flexes his pinky and spoiler alert, Tai Lung is destroyed. And before joining the crew of Kung Fu Panda, when asked to take on the role, Jack Black was at a crossroads and hesitant to become an animated character. But Jeffrey Katzenberg, the CEO of DreamWorks Animation, sealed the deal by having animators do a sample of Poe animated with Jack Black's voice from High Fidelity. Talk about getting it done. Now on to the next question. This species of frog can freeze itself for the winter and lives north of the Arctic Circle. Is it A, the ice climber, B, the leopard snow frog, C, the red-eyed tree frog, or D, the wood frog? Frogs usually tend to stay in warmer climates, but our answer, D, the wood frog buries itself in the ice every winter. Their blood and most tissue can freeze, but to ensure the entire frog doesn't freeze to death, urea and glucose are produced. This prevents overfreezing. Now, on to the next question. This question is sponsored by NFT Laser Engravers. Check out this video from our friends at NFT Laser Engravers. Thank you, NFT Laser Engravers. We've got nine incredible engravings to give out to lucky winners this week. Now, on to the question, what are the names of the children in the Bernstein Bears? Is it A, Tom and Sally, B, Bonnie and Jeff, C, brother and sister, or D, Stan and Jan? Well, although Stan and Jan are the creators, the children from the Bernstein Bears simply go by C, brother and sister. There is quite an interesting Berenstein versus Berenstein Bears conspiracy theory. The theory states that most people remember the popular name of the children's book produced Berenstein, but it's somehow actually Berenstein. This is a weird example of what is known as the Mandala effect. I'm curious, how do you remember saying it, Freckle Fram? Berenstein or Berenstein? Tell us in the Discord, let's stir things up a bit. Now, on to the question number four. What color are corduroy's overalls? Is it A, brown, B, blue, C, green, or D, red? The story of Corduroy revolves around him looking for his lost button on his overalls. And the colors of his overalls are C, green. Don Freeman explained that he had the idea for writing a story taking place in a department store, which a character wanders around after the doors are closed. He wanted the storyline to portray the difference between the luxury of such department stores and the simple life that most people live, and at the same time highlighting basic values. The bear's name was derived from another children's book written by Freeman, Corduroy, which the inferior decorator tells a story about a boy driving his parents crazy by painting on their apartment walls. Now onto the final question of the week. This ritualistic folk medical practice involves pricking and burning human skin before administering frog secretion. Is it A, combo, B, bufo, C, ayahuasca, or D, sacred ascension? 
Well, our answer is A, a combo cleanse. Combo cleansing, also known as combo circle or combo ceremony, combo vaccina do sapo, or just sapo from the Portuguese sapo meaning toad, is a purge using skin secretions of the combo, which is a species of frog. Most describe the experience as brutal and not something they would recommend trying again. The experience can cause extreme sickness, hallucinations, purging, fever, and more, but is meant for you to come out the other side as a changed individual. And that concludes this week of Bears versus Frogs trivia. It's been an epic battle, and I've been your host, Ian Finer. Thank you so much for playing, and thanks to our sponsors for the week, the Brawler Bears and the Plague NFT. Make sure you jump on our Discord server, discord.gg slash freckle, to be included in this week's incredible prize raffles. Now, we'll see you again next week as we partner with Virtue Animation and the Basement Gang Project to bring you an entire week of superhero-themed trivia. Thanks so much for playing, and have a great weekend.